Most machinists assume that the gold standard of tool post is the quick change. The principle behind the quick change tool post is that each tool is allocated its own holder. The tool is semi-permanently mounted in the holder and the holder tool assembly is then interchanged. To bring the tool to centre height, a nut is adjusted which locates with a slot in the tool holder. The other common system is the four-way tool post. In this case, up to four tools can be mounted at one time. To adjust to centre height, shims are placed beneath each tool. To interchange between tools on a four-way, the tool post is simply indexed. If you need a cutting tool that isn't currently mounted in the four-way, you need to find the tool, shim it and bolt it into place. Knowing this, it's easy to assume that the four-way may be the less efficient tool holding approach. Now we're going to demonstrate why this is actually very rarely the case. Let's make a knurled thumb screw. As standard, we leave the knife tool in place always on the four-way tool post. So to bring the knife tool into action, no spanners are required. It's simply a matter of loosening the ball handle, indexing the knife tool into place and then tightening the ball handle. Whereas for the quick change tool post, the mounted tool is dependent on the previous job. It might be the knife tool, it might be something else. Usually when we finish a job, we'll finish with a chamfering tool or something like that. So almost always we'll have to replace the tool before we can start the next job. This requires a spanner or a socket to loosen the cam. Provided the four-way tool post is well made, the final diameter within 10 microns of nominal size should be achievable just using the dial on the cross slide. This level of repeatability is only possible with the most expensive quick change tool posts, which are roughly an order of magnitude more expensive than an equivalent quality four-way. Moving to the chamfering tool with the quick change is still just as cumbersome as before. With the four-way tool post, the chamfering tool is almost always left in by default. The rear tool post is excellent for parting and grooving. Of course, the rear tool post can be used in conjunction with either the four-way or the quick change. The same principles apply to the screw cutting tool. Now it's time for knurling. To mount the knurling tool into the four-way tool post, we do now have to use an allen key to tighten up two bolts. The knurling tool floats to the centre height though, so we don't have to use shims. Also note that so far we've used three tools, but we have four slots available. So one slot still remains. To mount the knurling tool, we don't have to remove any of the previous tools. If you have enough holders with your quick change tool post, you might have your knurling tool already mounted in a holder, and then the changeover will be quicker with the quick change. Most of the time though, we won't have enough tool holders, in which case we'd still have to bolt the knurling tool into a holder. The final operation before parting off is chamfering the head of the bolt. Three tools remain in the tool post for quick and easy access for the next job. The next job may require an additional tool to be mounted. This can be fitted into the spare slot. Small boring bars can be fitted into a single left-handed slot using an L-shaped holder as described by the famous model engineer George Thomas. If a large boring bar is required, I would remove the screw cutting tool, keeping the chamfering tool and the knife tool easily accessible, as these are the most useful tools. Okay, so let's say you've had to remove a tool to sharpen it or to make space for a particular unusual tool that you need to fit. Now we need to find some shims. Like any good engineer, we always have shims on hand. No, we don't use any piece of junk fished out the recycling bin. 
You'd think that adjusting the centre height of a tool using shims would be much more cumbersome than using a knurled thumb screw, as you would see on a quick change. The reality is completely the opposite. The knurled thumb screw needs adjusting, locking, and then the cam needs to be tightened before you can check the height of the tool. If it's slightly off, the cam has to be loosened, the thumb screw adjusted, then the cam retightened for each iteration. Provided you have a way of predetermining the required shim thickness, shims are actually a much faster way of bringing the tool to centre height because it is not an iterative process. Here we show a fixture of our own design which allows the shim size to be read directly from the DTI dial. This requires the DTI dial to be numbered in reverse. We will show the process of manufacturing this dial in a future video. Once the required shim thickness has been assembled from a well-organised array of shims, the tool with its shims can be placed back onto the fixture to check the needle is close to zero. Furthermore, the four-way tool post has less overhang resulting in a more solid structure and the four-way tool post allows tooler setting to an arbitrary angle. Having said all this, the quick change tool post still has its place. High quality quick change tool posts, for instance the multi-fix tool posts, are also very accurate and very repeatable. In some circumstances, space may be limited, such as on a watchmaker's lathe. In this instance, perhaps a quick change tool post is the answer. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully we've given you a bit of an insight as to why we believe the 4-way tool post is superior. Of course everyone is entitled to their own opinion and there's nothing wrong with that. We'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments.